Hello and thank you for uh, watching this video. Uh, typically when we put on a, a program or um, what we call a course, they're a kind of in-depth long course and we usually end up recording the entire thing kind of boring everybody a little bit and it ends up being a long hour and a half video for uh, each class that we're doing and this co new course that we're starting um, through the Meditation Learning Center is the Eightfold Path and what we've decided to do is just take a segment of each um, kind of a uh, 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 a concentration of all the good material and put it in a short video like this. So this is what this is. It's um, going to be a look at the Eightfold Path. Uh, so there will be eight small videos. Generally when I put out a video it has to do directly with meditation but this is more of a contemplation, more of a teaching than, than anything else. So um, there, you know, we will be talking about meditation and things like that, but what we're trying to do is get the essence of uh, the Eightfold Path out. And, and if there's any questions, you can contact me through the Meditation Learning Center. Um, and um, so that's what this is all about. Um, this very first video uh, is, is about the very first uh, part of this, the uh, path which is called skillful understanding. It could be called right understanding. Sometimes people refer to as, uh, hear, might hear it as a right intention. But I really do like the, uh, the title uh, understanding, correct understanding or right understanding, skillful understanding, um, because it's the basic understanding of our human nature. Uh, the understanding that we have uh, that we're talking about is crucial to understand our happiness. You know, we all are on this earth basically to find our ultimate um, completed, how we feel completed in life, what we could call happiness. And sometimes it's just being, we see it as being okay with everything, right? And we're all on the same journey, basically, when, we, when we're looking at that. The, there's a type of happiness that we can find out in the world, um, material happiness or happiness that is sense-related, things that we see, I want that, things that we hear, oh, I like that, that we smell, taste, touch, um, different things out in the world that we connect with that we feel will actually bring us this lasting happiness. And as long as we, we do that, um, we'll be disappointed. It happens all the time. It happens every day. It ha almost happens every hour um, that we are disappointed and we suffer because of our, uh, this happiness is not uh, long lived. It's very, very impermanent. The closest that we can come to like a permanent, true, lasting type of happiness is the happiness that we can develop through our meditation. Um, and through just being able to let go, uh, let go of the need to control things, let go of our, some of our beliefs, let go of, of um, the constant search for happiness through material things. This renunciation, this letting go is really the, the principle, the backbone behind Eastern types of meditation. If we're doing a meditation where we're trying to bring something into our lives, especially something material like manifesting, it's, it's probably a Western practice and more re closely related to self-hypnosis. But the Western practices of meditation point uh, to this type of happiness that we're looking for inside, a happiness of, from letting go, from renouncing. There are deeper forms of happiness the, that the Buddha po skillfully pointed out for us. These are the uh, different levels of awakening, the different levels of enlightenment, if you will. Um, stream enter, uh, once returner, non-returner, the arhat. These are different levels of, uh, of enlightenment that the Buddha spelled out for us. He, whatever level we're in, we owe it to ourselves to to work and uh, to apply effort, you know, towards this understanding and towards these um, 
these movements, our own personal movement towards uh, happiness, lasting, real happiness. And so whatever level we're at, we should be working at it. And the level, um, level you are at now is perfectly fine. It's, it's exactly where you should be. But what we're doing in doing these kinds of studies, uh, studying, I should say, is getting to know ourselves and our human nature a little bit better. So the this, this study that we're talking about now is the Eightfold Path. We're looking at skillful understanding. This understanding that the Buddha is talking about is the understanding, the clarity that is behind uh, two things. First of all, um, behind the idea of cause and effect, uh, what we could call karma. Karma is action. Um, the karma that the Buddha is talking about is the fundamental part of life that if we, have, if we perform an action, there's a result from it. If we believe that something out in the world can provide lasting happiness for us, and we do something, we have an action to have that become achieved, to, to manifest that, and it doesn't last long, the karma consequences as a result of that is that we suffer. And that is one of the biggest teachings of Buddhism that is probably the most misunderstood and the most uh, consistent is that we uh, suffer and we suffer because of our sufferings. Or I'm, I'm sorry, we suffer because of our desires. And it's not only the desire for, for material things um, and to, you know, to bring about this type of happiness, but it's also the desire for wanting things to be different than what they currently are. It's this unsettling that we have. And this is probably the most um, uh, abrasive kind of suffering that we have, that we just are not settled in. It's, it's like a, it's stress, you know, what we call stress these days. It's very pervasive and um, it's based on wanting things to be different than what they are. That's a desire, a strong desire. It's based on our preferences. But if we can, generally through the practice of meditation, understand that everything is fine, just the way it is, and um, there's a reason for things to be the way they are, it's not that we are necessarily giving up on the world and saying, okay, what happens, happens. I mean, we still apply effort and we still... Um, we still make a difference in the world, you know, uh, we make ourselves happy and make other people's lives as easy as possible. But we have this understanding that um, everything is fine. And we kind of get to the point where we renounce the idea that things have to be our own way. Desires for things to be different is probably the biggest desire we have. So the, in the Four Noble Truths, which is Buddha's very first teaching, um, he, he mentioned uh, that we, des we suffer. That was the first noble truth. Second noble truth is that we suffer because of our desires, what I just explained. Um, he, he mentioned in the third noble truth that there is actually a way out of this. You know, he's, he's being a doctor. He, he diagnoses our... Uh, he, 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 he diagnosed the disease, the dis-ease that we have. And then he says that there is a cure, and then he gave us the prescription, the fourth noble truth, which is uh, to follow this very subtle, but very, very worthwhile path, this eightfold path. This was his discovery and his gift for us, this eightfold path. And so that's what we're talking about within these um, short little videos. If it's more of a contemplation than a meditation, uh, we want to contemplate that every action that we do throughout the day has a result. And if we live this way, it can completely change our world. That even every thought that we have has a result to it. Every action that we do with the body, speech, and mind has a result, cause and effect, or karma. And this, is a, this teaching is a direct result of the Four Noble Truths. Our desires cause our suffering. So we want to be very, very mindful of, of all of this and, 
and contemplate it, um, see it until the, uh, the suffering eases. And while we're doing this, comp constantly ask ourselves, am I happy? Am I happy in what I'm doing? And if not, we should look at why. And it's probably going to come out as one of the results of one of the actions that we've performed recently or in the past. So I hope this is helpful. Please stay tuned um, and look for the next video as it comes out. If you have any questions, please contact me. Uh, my name is Shane Wilson uh, through the Meditation Learning Center. And um, thank you very much for watching. Thank you.